I know that for many Americans watching right now, the state of our economy is a concern that rises above all others. If you haven't been personally affected by this recession, you probably know someone who has. A friend, a neighbor, a member of your family. Since President Obama gave this speech in February 2009, 33 municipalities across the country have filed for bankruptcy. Not since the Great Depression have so many cities been so broke. No other place in America has borne the brunt more than the Central Valley city of Stockton, California, the largest city in American history to file for bankruptcy. This is going to kill someone. This may have national implications if municipal bonds have no safety. The headlines tell a story of greedy unions versus short-changed creditors. Those companies stand to lose $160 million. But we've gone deeper. We've looked at the deals. We now know what brought Stockton to its knees. Every generation, we've got to have a freaking crisis. It's a story of a city that had big dreams it couldn't afford. Everyone was a little complicit. Of the greedy bankers who exploited it. It was just open and blatant. And of the people who are now paying the price. Give us our money back. More than anything, this is the story of bonds, municipal bonds, and the many ways that dragged the city into debilitating debts. Stockton now ranks seventh in the country for unemployment. Crime has skyrocketed. 2012 was a record year for homicides in the city. Coming to work here in Stockton, I mean, I've seen uh, numerous homicides and um, other violent crimes. It has gotten worse in the past few years that I've been here. As Officer Ortez drives through Stockton streets on his evening beat, he sees the human cost firsthand. With 20% of the city below the poverty line, petty theft and drug-related incidents occupy much of his time. And the force is stretched thin. Since declaring a fiscal emergency in 2009, the city has closed fire stations. It has laid off over a third of its police officers. It has cut basic services to the bone. But none of that has been enough. On June 26, 2012, the City Council of Stockton, California called an unprecedented meeting. This is an important meeting. That day, in a closed door session, the City Council had taken the drastic decision to file for bankruptcy. Now, in response, the people of Stockton poured into the town hall to vent their anger. I'd like to say to the council members and the city manager that your smirks and your disconcern and your lack of concern for us does not go unnoticed. The world is watching, thank God, so they can see that we are victims of a society that's failing us. Wells Fargo Bank kicks sand in the face of the city of Stockton. How many houses have they foreclosed on? How much money do they owe in taxes? My wish is for the entire city and country to yell fire. City workers, who had already voluntarily taken cuts, were furious. Now the pensions that police and firefighters had paid into for years were on the line. The decisions that you are making tonight are effectively throwing a grenade in my life and destroying everything that I've worked for. I am only one of many stories, as you heard. You sit up there every meeting and you pat yourselves on the back over how brave you are making these tough decisions. But you're not brave. Brave is running into a burning building. Brave is running towards bullets. Brave is standing up here and sharing your personal stories when you feel like your world is falling apart. Former 911 dispatcher Christina Prendergrass worked for Stockton for 17 years. She lost her health care when the city cut retiree benefits as it headed towards bankruptcy. I tried to make people listen. Everybody thinks, you know, this is a, something that's promised to you and they won't do that because you have a contract. But they did do it. Christina's life now revolves around how to get medical coverage for herself and friends in the same spot. 
Christina and former colleague Joni both worked on Stockton's demanding 911 switchboards until severe health problems forced them to leave their jobs. When the city declared a fiscal emergency last spring, their health care was cut off. And Joni has a daughter with a severe and potentially fatal heart condition who is no longer covered. So she can't be without medical. She'll die. For us as parents, not being able to provide for your children is more than you can stomach. But for her to know at 18 that she feels she's a financial burden to us and that she's told us mm, after her surgery last year, she said, you know, if I don't feel good, I'm not going to tell you because we can't afford for me to go to the hospital. This whole bankruptcy, the lawyers for the bondholders are now threatening to go after our PERS, which is our retirement. We don't have any other retirement, that's it. Mm -hmm. We don't have social security. So we've taken a huge pay cut, we've lost our medical benefits, and now you're trying to take our retirement. I have nothing left. Stockton is the largest city in American history to file for bankruptcy. Since the housing crash, the city has struggled to pay its bills, seeking to protect what little they had for essential services like fire, police, and safety. They sought protection through the federal courts. The creditors immediately came after Stockton, demanding the city honor its debts. Figuring out why this happened and what to do about it is now up to the new city council including 22-year-old Michael Tubbs. It's very interesting to be the youngest city council member at a time when the city is bankrupt. Because um, a lot of people during the campaign would say, oh, he hasn't enough experience, he doesn't know what he's doing. And our retort time after time would be, well, if we're the first city this size to be bankrupt, no one knows what they're doing, number one. And no one knew what they were doing back then, number two. Tubbs decided to run for office in his native city when he was still a student at Stanford University. Oprah Winfrey visited campus and was so impressed with Tubbs, she donated to his campaign. Now Tubbs agonizes over the tough decisions the council has been forced to make. You talk about we're making tough decisions, and I keep saying, well, nothing's tougher than cutting someone's health care that they thought they're going to get for the rest of their life, and they planned accordingly, and they retired accordingly. Stockton's debt has mounted quickly in recent years. Downtown has become a depressing place. I didn't realize how, you know, I see this all the time, but it's like, damn, this is deserted. But the city's prospects weren't always so grim. Stockton is located on a navigable river. The farmers and packers' goods may be loaded into ships for Asia or Australia, or into freight cars which distribute the harvest of the Central Valley to every state in the Union. Stockton was once a thriving working-class city, but it was hit hard by the economic downturn of the 1970s. Nobody came downtown in the 70s and 80s for fear of their life. Uh, there was crack dealing and uh, just a mess downtown. Gary Podesto is a former mayor of Stockton. If you, if you have a city, it has an image. And the image of the city of Stockton was the vagrant, uh, a crack dealing downtown. And if you were in Stockton, you would leave a restaurant and have someone try to sell you crack five steps out of the restaurant. One lady had her finger cut off for the ring she was wearing. Podesto had a chance to turn the city around when he was elected mayor in the late 90s. As the national economy improved and the housing market boomed, he seized the opportunity to redevelop Stockton's notorious downtown. One of the first things Podesto did was hire a hotshot city manager, Mark Lewis. We had kind of a blueprint of where we wanted to go and what we wanted to attract to Stockton, and Mark Lewis seemed to be the best person to move us forward in that direction. He, he was uh, an aggressive uh, person from, a, uh, from almost a private sector standpoint. He would move quicker than most of the times you'd find a bureaucrat. The new manager was paid a high salary Lewis took the city's modest redevelopment plans and put them on steroids. You know, Stockton is the place. I mean, I think uh, 
really the gem of all California. Under Lewis, the city drew up plans for a brand new 12,000 seat stadium. It would include a hotel and an outdoor ballpark. Lewis also spearheaded a complete revamp of the city's waterfront. Thanks to the housing boom, property tax revenue was flowing into the city coffers. Stockton was ripping up its tomato fields and replacing them with housing. Everybody was getting a house and all these big houses were being built in the Western Ranch area and the South Side. And this is the excitement of the time, like money, money, we're building, we're building, we're sprawling, we're all the way in Lodi, we're all the way in French Camp. Let's build up the downtown. And how did they pay for it? Like everyone else at the time, they borrowed. The best laid plans of mice and men oft go astray. The city's plan to pay for this big downtown revamp was to sell $47 million worth of bonds. In March 2004, the city council gathered to vote on borrowing the money. There was only one voice in opposition, city councilman Richard Nickerson. When we finance this, the cupboard is bare. We're putting every, every penny we've got out of every hidden fund, every under the cupboard, every anything is going into the financing. And you still borrowed millions of dollars. <clears throat> if something goes wrong, Where's your backup? It isn't in the city finances. And when you have to make up, if anything does go wrong, I'm not saying that it will. I pray that it does not. But if it does, what are you going to do? Cast your votes. Only Nickerson voted no. Carries six one. Thank you all for being here. Thank the bonds all. were issued within weeks. No one was particularly worried because city bonds are supposed to be safe. Uh, the actual bonds for the arena and the ballpark sold in one day. Traditionally, cities use bonds to pay for basic infrastructure, roads, sewers, bridges. As investments, these bonds have always been considered a safe bet for everyone from little old ladies to Goldman Sachs. A bond is a promise by the government to pay you back, plus interest, no matter what. But this Stockton bond scheme was different. These bonds were being used to finance a high-stakes glamour project, the sports arena and hotel complex. If these did not bring in revenue, the city was in trouble. The general fund is the backstop. So if, if something goes wrong with the arena or something goes wrong with the bond, it's the general fund that has to come up and pick up the slack. Stockton wasn't alone in this redevelopment boom. 2005 was a record year for the municipal bond market. $408 billion worth of projects were greenlit by cities across the country. The th decisions made in 2004 and 2005 were based on a very rosy view of the world. People weren't willing to sit there and say, this looks a little strange. Kit Taylor is the former head of the federal agency that sets the rules for bondbrokers and the deals they make with cities and counties. He says the housing boom spurred on cities like Stockton to spend more than they should. Rising housing values are, quite frankly, a little bit like taking an alcoholic to a liquor store and saying, what do you want? Because they're sitting there looking at tremendous jumps in revenue. Stockton went on a spending spree and poured its bond money into rebuilding downtown. The dilapidated marina got a full makeover. Stockton purchased a new city hall building. The flagship arena was completed within a year and opened with a Neil Diamond concert, a concert that failed to draw the sellout crowds city fathers had hoped for. I think we have to look back at to, at to what was built. An arena was built. A marina was built, a $1 million was spent on Neil Diamond for a certain demographic of the city. None of that stuff matters nor resonates. Who cares? <laughs> I'm trying to pay bills. I'm, I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to make it to the next day. For many, the extravagant vanity projects of downtown Stockton have become a monument to the city's incompetence. 
But who was selling Stockton on these deals that were too good to be true? The banks that underwrote the bonds didn't raise red flags. They were making too much money themselves, sometimes in ways that stretched the limits of the law. For the big banks, this was a very lucrative business. Very, very, very profitable. The banks could make money in two ways. First, when they issue bonds for a city, they charge a fee, often millions of dollars. But there are other ways for the banks to cash in. A new moneymaker was a derivative called a GIC, a Guaranteed Investment Contract. The way it works is this. When the city gets its bond money, it suddenly has millions and millions of dollars. The money it doesn't spend right away goes into the bank. You have municipalities with tens and hundreds of millions, if not a billion dollars of monies flowing through their financial accounts. The cities want to earn as much interest as possible. And the banks offered GICs as a new kind of investment product. The banks would compete to offer the best interest rate. But there was a problem. The bidding was rigged. It was believed that the bidding process was fair, competitive, and above board. Well, the Department of Justice announced that it was not. Lo and behold, the truth has come out. Attorney Nancy Nishimura represents Stockton and other cities in California, seeking restitution from the banks for this alleged fraud. In about 2006, the United States Department of Justice reported that it was investigating financial institutions including Bank of America, UBS, JP Morgan, GE Trinity, and others for bid rigging. And when I say bid rigging, I mean bidding a suppressed interest rate. And as a consequence, Stockton was receiving less interest on its investment than it should have received. The extra money went into the pockets of the banks. Department of Justice investigators uncovered collusion among dozens of banks. The scam was relatively simple. Each of the parties who bid were actually colluding with each other behind the scenes. Prior to submitting bids to Stockton, they had already pre-designated who would win the auction. At GE Trinity, the conspiracy involved three brokers. As the money poured in, they became concerned that a colleague was gonna blow their cover. The conversation was revealed in the Department of Justice investigation. She's jacking around to a lot of people, so you can't tell her anything. What the fuck? I wonder who got her so hot and heavy. We should probably have a talk about that offline. I think the bank saw Stockton and thought a lot of people in Stockton weren't that intelligent. It would just come and tell us anything. <laughs> but the banks were just doing that to stop. They're doing that to the nation. They're doing that to homeowners. They're doing it to, to each other. The federal probe into bid rigging has begun to show results. So far, at least a dozen financial firms have been investigated. But the cities may never get their money back. We're five years into this case, and I just pray that the civil lawyers will be allowed to proceed to do the right thing and seek justice for these municipalities, including Stockton. In 2008, Stockton filed a class action lawsuit with dozens of cities against a long list of banks called bid rigging. But by this time, Stockton had an even bigger problem on its hands, a pension crisis. Back in the 1980s and 90s, Stockton was paying its firefighters, police, and other city workers below average salaries. After 9-11, the city council voted to increase pay and pension benefits, including lifetime medical coverage, to match other cities around the state. And I think that vote that night cost the city $100 million. As the city hired more people, the pension obligations mushroomed. They really didn't have enough money to pay for everything. Marcia Fritz is an expert in public and private pensions. She says Stockton must stop being so generous. All it takes to get the city back to solvency is to take a haircut on these benefits, just like we have in the private sector. The generous benefits for firefighters, police, and city employees 
eventually caught up with Stockton. For years, the city had not set aside enough money to cover their growing pension obligations. In 2007, the city received a bill from the State Public Employee Retirement System, or CalPERS, for $52 million. Lehman Brothers stepped in, offering to bail the city out. They would underwrite a bond to cover the pension bill and give Stockton several years to pay it back. At the time, it looked like a good deal to local politicians. It's like getting a payday loan, and you're a politician or somebody that's sitting there saying, hey, I don't care five years. I don't even know whether I'll be elected five years. But I do know I got the money today. And that's what Greece did, by the way, in hiding their deficit. Lehman Brothers pitched the city on issuing a new kind of high-risk bond called Pension Obligation Bonds, or POBs. Because Stockton was still projecting rising revenue, it was counting on having the money to pay back the pension bonds in the coming years. It's like putting your checking account on your credit card. Uh, at some point, uh, you're going to have to pay this. Traditional bonds usually have some sort of collateral to back them up. But these pension bonds didn't. I mean, if the bonding companies want to take the arena, at least they're bonding something that's got a value. Uh, when you're bonding pension benefits, there's really nothing you can come back and take as an asset to cover the bond, except the general fund, which has to stand behind everything. Lehman Brothers, which would soon collapse, had sold the city a deal which could have worked as long as the economy kept growing. I did watch the council meeting when Lehman Brothers came and presented. And I remember saying, well, hell, it's Lehman Brothers. Half them people don't know nothing about pension bonds. They trust the expert. Lehman Brothers, back then, they were a reputable bank. And all they did was put together a nice little PowerPoint with some nice graphics, talk really fast, wear nice suits. And they, they have, they're reputable. And look where we are now. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're down over 16%. The Dow traders are standing there watching in amazement, and I don't blame them. Because we're now down 43%. This could be the most serious recession in decades. The dominoes began to fall, and fast. Banks raised rates on adjustable mortgages. Homeowners missed payments. Stockton became the number one city for foreclosures in the country. Property values plummeted. Millions in tax revenue disappeared from the city's general fund. A fiscal emergency was declared. Stockton stopped making payments on its bonds. On June 26, 2012, the City Council of Stockton declared bankruptcy, provoking fear and anger. My name is Gary Jones. I'm a medical retiree. I ask you for a patient. I have a brain tumor that's in my speech center. Gary Jones was a Stockton police officer. I just want to get out there that, you know, people, if I lose this medical, uh, for me, it might as well be a life sentence. When I received information that I had a brain tumor, way back, I had been on a SWAT team way back then, all that good stuff, thought I was immortal, and you, oh, you get a phone call that something like this changes your life, Instantly. Mr. Jones, thank you. Your time is up. We appreciate your comments. I'd like a couple more minutes. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we, we talk about this with people all the time, is that this is going to kill someone. It's not going to make it uncomfortable for them. It's not going to cut off their Starbucks run. It's, it's not going to prevent them from going to Tahiti. It will kill someone. I think most people would say that our police force and our fire department have done an amazing job with drastically reduced resources, but frankly, it's not enough. I mean, Stockton is really hurting, and for our Wall Street creditors to say, you should, you should continue to cut, we, we just think that's irresponsible, and the council's not willing to do it. The battle lines were drawn. Stockton went to federal bankruptcy court to seek protection from its creditors. The lawyers for the bondholders were demanding to be paid back and picked over the city's books for anything of value. Wells Fargo repossessed the new city hall and two parking garages. 
These days, in effect, the creditors own the city. So much so, that when 26-year-old Marine Sal Benavidez was hit and paralyzed in a Stockton intersection, the creditors blocked the city from paying any restitution. And when Stockton tried to prevent further pension cuts, the lawyers for the creditors tried to stop that too. In the trial, the banks brought in Marsha Fritz as an expert witness. Why should we take a haircut when we loaned you money, yet you spent the money on higher wages, and you spent the money on higher benefits, and you, you're doing nothing to make the benefits more reasonable? Stockton argued it had already made deep cuts to the city staff and pensions and couldn't do any more. That is why we saw it, Chapter 9. We, we honestly believed, and still do, that any further cuts to public safety would absolutely jeopardize the health and safety of the people that live in the city of Stockton. At the federal court, Stockton's new city manager, Bob Dice, fought back against claims Stockton hadn't done its part. The reality is, for our financial restructuring proposal, 45% of the restructuring savings comes from employees or labor. 31% of the restructuring savings came from the community and lost services. 20% came from retirees. 4%, 4% came from the debt holders. Not 40 like it's been, it's been reported, not 44 like it's been reported, 4%. But bankers worry that if they lose the case and Stockton is allowed to declare bankruptcy, other troubled cities will do the same. Municipal bankruptcy is a last resort. It is a terrible, terrible plan unless you have absolutely no other way. And I don't think cities will be doing it unless, like Stockton, they had no other option. Stockton is not alone. Since 2010, 33 other municipalities have filed for bankruptcy around the country. For Jefferson County, Alabama, the culprits were the bonds for the sewer system. Government investigators found that Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan paid kickbacks to local politicians to get the county business. Scranton, Pennsylvania defaulted on bonds for a parking garage and recently had to cut city pay to minimum wage. Now Detroit may soon eclipse Stockton as the biggest city in America to go over the edge. Today, I'm confirming my determination that a financial emergency exists in the city of Detroit. Last month, a federal judge ruled that Stockton was officially bankrupt. Stockton's credit rating has been downgraded to junk status. Many in the city are furious. Give us our money back. Don't take money from us and don't give us what we're entitled to. I have bullet holes in my window. My property was set on fire. And when I came to the city council and I said, what you gonna do about it? They say, well, you can hire a private detective if you want to. I'm glad we told Wall Street to kiss off. And excuse my language, but I mean kiss off because they've ripped off our homes. We've had the highest foreclosure rate in the nation. We've had the highest interest rates. They ripped us off, and I'm glad to see that payback is right there facing them in the face right now. The new city council, who inherited this disaster, is now trying to keep Stockton afloat. The people who caused the mess are long gone. But that, it's really funny that all these people that were here back then, I haven't heard anything from them. <laughs> They're retired, making good money, don't live in the city. <laughs> don't live in this city um, and have nothing to say about how we got here. Former Mayor Gary Podesto is retired and living comfortably in Santa Cruz. He says he has no regrets about his grand plans for redeveloping downtown Stockton. His city manager, Mark Lewis, moved on to a high-paying job working for Reno, Nevada, where he built another ballpark and was later fired. As for the bid-rigging brokers from GE Trinity, all three were convicted of fraud and are facing three to five years in jail. But they were the tip of the iceberg. 19 brokers across major banks have now been caught and fined. More prosecutions are expected. 
the Department of Justice calls it the biggest scandal in the 200-year history of the municipal bond market. Meanwhile, Gary Jones has been in and out of the hospital. The city is still denying health benefits for him and other retirees. And Stockton continues to lose almost a million dollars a year to subsidize that beautiful downtown sports arena. So who took down Stockton? There was more than one finger on the trigger. It is a city that overreached. It is a city that was exploited by the banks. And like many communities across the country, it was a city that believed the good times would last forever until it was too late.